Hello, this is Chris Watts. This is an artist's rendition of Ralph Waldo Emerson. It's about technology, humanity, and nature. Produced in 2004. It's a book. Begin. There. The world is his who can see through its pretension. Behold the overgrown error. What deafness, what stone blind custom, what overgrown error you behold is there? Only by sufferance, your sufferance, see it to be a lie, and you have already dealt it its mortal blow. Not he is great who can alter matter, but he who can alter the state of mind. They are the kings of the world who give the color of their present thought to all nature and all art. And persuade men by the cheerful serenity of their carrying the matter that this thing which they do is the apple which the ages have desired to pluck now at last ripe and inviting nations to the harvest I might not carry with me the feeling of my audience in stating my own belief, but I have already shown the ground of my hope in adverting to the doctrine that man is one. I believe man has been wronged. He has wronged himself. He has almost lost the light that can lead him back to his prerogatives. Men are become of no account. Men in history, men in the world of today are bugs, are spawn, and are called the mass and the herd. In a century, in a millennium, one or two men become the hero. All the rest behold in the hero and are content to be less. What a testimony full of grandeur, full of pity, is born to the demands of his own nature by the poor clansman, the poor partisan who rejoices in the glory of his chief. Men such as they are very naturally seek money or power, and power because it is as good as money, the spoils so called of office, and why not, for they aspire to the highest, and this, in their sleepwalking, they dream is highest. Wake them, and they shall quit the false good and leap to the true, and leave governments to clerks and desks. 
This revolution is to be wrought by the gradual domestication of the idea of culture. The, the main enterprise of the world for splendor, for extent, is the upbuilding of a man. Here are the materials strewn along the ground. The private life of one man shall be a more illustrious monarchy, more formidable to its enemy more sweet and serene in its influence to its friend than any kingdom in history. For a man rightly viewed comprehendeth the particular natures of all men. The books which once we valued more than the apple of the eye we have quite exhausted. What is it that but saying that we have come up with the point of view which the universal mind took through the eyes of one scribe? We have been that man and passed on. First one and then another, we drain all cisterns, and waxing greater by all these supplies, we crave a better and more abundant food. The human mind cannot be enshrined in a person who shall set a barrier on any one side to this unbounded, unboundable empire. It is one central fire, and flaming now out of the lips of Etna, lightens the capes of Sicily, and now out of the throat of Vesuvius illuminates the towers and vineyards of Naples, it is one light which beams out of a thousand stars. It is one soul which animates all men. Amen.